Hello, and welcome back to the second segment of tonight's study entitled Worship Through New Eyes Part 2. In the first segment of tonight's study, we reminded ourselves of our definition of worship, which is an, an interaction or an encounter with God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We also affirm that worship should probably be at the center of the relationship between God and human beings. Certainly the Old and New Testament scriptures affirm that. Worship of God should be at the center. Of course we worship many other things. I'm not going to get into that in this particular lesson. But I want to affirm that the worship of God should be at the center of the relationship between God and humans. If indeed we embrace our definition of worship being an encounter or interaction with God, then it would make sense that we would worship God on a regular and consistent basis if we indeed believe that we encounter or interact with God through our worship. Now, let's take a look at some New Testament um, references concerning worship in the life of the early Christian church. Now, we get a lot of this information from the material that is found in the Acts of the Apostle, which gives us a very vivid picture of what life was like in the early Christian church. And we know from this particular writing that worship, at least from that perspective, at least from that writer or author's perspective and reporting, worship was at the center of the Christian individual and corporate life. Acts chapter 2 verse 46 says that they, talking about the Christians, worship together regularly at the temple each day. They met in small groups in homes for communion and they shared their meals with great joy and thankfulness. Uh, the Bible even tells stories about how people are traveling to worship and they encounter the disciples who are able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Um, Acts chapter 8 verses 26, 26 through 27 says that, But as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go over to the road that runs from Jerusalem through the Gaza desert, arriving around noon. So he did that. And who should be coming down the road but the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace the queen. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship. Now this is a non-Jewish person. But at that particular time in the New Testament, even though Christianity was not the cohesive and the firmly established entity that we know it to be today, still the worship of Jehovah God through Jude Judaism and through um, the Jewish religious practices was a part of the life of non-Jewish people as well. Not all non-Jewish people. Again, I'm suggesting that worship was important to the Jews and through its importance to them, they also persuaded many other people to see worship of God as being important. Let's continue to explore some other references. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 4, says, Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch were Barnabas and Simeon. One day, these men were worshiping and fasting, and the Holy Spirit said to them, While they were worshiping and fasting, dedicate Barnabas and Paul for a special job I have for them. These men encountered God through their worship. And so encountering God, God spoke to them as they were worshiping and praying to God. Now, the book of Revelation is one of the foremost documents of the New Testament as pertains to its impact on our understanding of Christianity presently as well as what will come in the end time. But the book of Revelation is filled with worship scenes. All through the book of Revelation, from beginning to the end, you have scene after scene concerning worship of God and the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ. John even says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, listen to this. It was on the Lord's day that I was worshiping when suddenly... 
I heard a loud voice behind me, a voice that sounded like a trumpet blast. Here is John worshiping God, and while he is worshiping, he encounters God. God interacts with them and gives to him the vision of the revelation, which he subsequently writes down, and now we have it as one of the foremost tools of the Christian faith. Well, I'm going to bring um, our study to an end tonight, but I want to even remind us that according to John's revelation that Worship is not just going, not just something we do now while we're on earth. It's not just something we do in this present time. But John suggests that, rever that um, worship will take place even after the end of this age and throughout the end of time in general. Revelation chapter 21, verses 22 through 26. Listen to this. John is writing. He says, now, this is the new heaven and new earth that he has seen now. He says, no temple could be seen in the city, the new heaven, new earth, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are worshipped in it everywhere. The God of our faith and... God's son, God's agent, God's representative, Jesus Christ, will be worshipped in the new heaven and new earth. That, that signifies that the worship of God and the Lamb will continue throughout the ages. My question tonight, my sisters and my brothers, is how important is worship to you? Do you actually see your worship as having an encounter with God? I want you to hit me up on the website at www.acardevincent.com and post a response or post a question, post a comment. Let me know what you think about this lesson and what you think about worship matters in general. I thank you so much for joining us in tonight's study. I look forward to seeing you on next week. Remember, you can, you're free to download this study and print it out um, for your convenience at any time. God bless you. Thank you for joining our study tonight.